Did we sell Harry Maguire to Spurs for 21 million? No. We sold him for 25 million instead. He'll be gone come January, where hopefully we can make some signings to add to the team that lost to Bournemouth and to Bayern Munich. However, Harry still has a part to play in the squad as our goalkeeper. When Diego Costa went off injured against Newcastle, even my grandmother could have done a better job. I mean, what is he actually doing here? Obviously, we lost that game and Costa is out for up to five weeks, meaning Dean Henderson will be between the sticks. He helped us to our only point between episodes as we drew 2-2 with West Ham in a game where Sancho picked up another injury. It means we slip away from the top of the table. However, we're a draw away from qualifying for the Champions League knockout stages. So let's give it a go, shall we? This is the team that's going to be taking on Celtic this evening, a few changes in there to just rest and rotate a few players. It should still be enough to actually go on to beat Celtic. But the main thing is we just need to avoid defeat and we will qualify. In fact, we even could lose this game, I think, by a goal and still qualify on goal difference. So there are plenty of ways for us to qualify from the group. But we want to win this game today to get the additional prize money. But we won't do it like that. We should just double check some more, actually. Does that keep us where, um, ooh, no. Okay, well, right. In that case, we need to at least equalize here and we've not been doing great in between episodes. We've not really looked like winning any of the games that we've been in and Celtic are looking for their second. <sighs> to be fair, the Europa League does have better music than the Champions League, so. I think we need to go more attacking right off the bat straight away. Let's just really get ourselves going forward a little bit more here. Celtic have clearly set up to play a certain way and they're doing it so, so well. They're just being able to bypass our midfield and, and get themselves forward past Luke Shaw there, who's been caught napping now. Cross comes in, it's over the bar. Dean Henderson, as soon as we get a fit, Diogo Costa back is out of his team. But straight away, we've reached half time here and... <sighs> I am a little bit speechless. I did not expect this. We had a really comfortable game against Celtic previously as well. So the fact that it's all going downhill now is, well, far from ideal. Taylor brings the ball forward for Celtic, gives the ball into Dazen, who uh, has got a chance to get past Varane, but no one's getting past Varane at that stage. He gets the ball back to Dallow and Scott McTominay can bring it forward to Garnacho, who's approaching 10 goals for the season now. He's been so, so good, particularly in the Champions League. He has missed the Champions League for us this season, apart from in those moments where he just gives the ball away so cheaply. The ball is played back to Joe Hart, the keeper, who, of course, is a Man City blue at heart. He's got it in for us, Reds, as uh, Rash Rashford gets the ball off Coop Miners and, well, no one was stopping that one. Rashford only scoring his third of the season, but it's right at the start of the second half here and this might give us a lifeline. Dallow on the ball gives it into Rashford. If we can get ourselves an equaliser here, that would be wonderful. Otherwise, we could be crashing out of the Champions League at the group stage, which is... Not what we need as a club. We need the Champions League money. We need the Champions League to sign the players that we need to win the Champions League and then go on to win the Premier League as well. But Varane is pushing it ball backwards towards Henderson, who finds the ball to Dallow, who chests it down, sends it out wide to Garnacho, who tries to get past his man, does it a second time of asking, cross into the middle. Rashford's waiting. Rashford heads it over the bar. 30 minutes to go in this game, and I think Coop Miners is injured, so let's bring him off for Batarina. Neither of our wingers are playing particularly well in, in Anthony or Garnacho. And actually, Bruno Fernandes is doing pretty poor. Let's bring Christian Eriksson on instead. Anthony is going to come off, but I mean, Rashford maybe goes inside forward. Let's bring Gonzalo Ramos on, who again is still being so marmite at the moment. He may well be our top scorer, but he scores like two goals a game and then goes quiet for three games, and then scores two again. Like he just, he's inconsistent. But we need him to come off the bench tonight and do something special. Batarina finds substitute Christian Eriksen, finds Gonzalo Ramos, who puts the ball through to Rashford, who's through and open and puts it over the bar. Marcus. Oh, it was a corner. Okay, fairs. We'll take that then. Uh, it was a good save in that case from Joe Hart. And it's sent to the far post and Hart can collect it. Shout demands more. We've got 20 minutes to score an equaliser here, which will send us through to the Champions League knockout stage. If we can't equalise, we're out of the Champions League and dropping down into the Europa League which we have a good chance of winning. I'll be honest with you. It's a chance for a trophy this season. That's the only sort of... 
saving grace from all of this if we get knocked out of the Champions League. We won't go on to win the Champions League this season. I don't believe we've got a team good enough to do that. We should have a team good enough to get out of our group, particularly with Celtic in there, but we just aren't doing it right now as Ericsson brings the ball forward, dispossessed, but Garnacho picks up the scraps. Through to Ericsson, back to Dallo, who puts a cross in towards Batarina, can't win it in the air. Gets it down to Gonzalo Ramos, though, who just hits the crossbar from about six yards out. I mean, at this stage, wing-backs on attack, wing-backs on attack. You know, there's no point worrying about a counter-attack at this stage when we're, we're losing. We have to get bodies forward. We have to bring Gonzalo Inacio off for uh, Lissandro Martinez in this stage. Let's bring him on because he's a bit injured, apparently. We have been just ahead in the match stats, so though XG Celtic are ahead and deserve their lead right now based on that. Two, what, well, a minute of normal time to go, the 89th minute now. <sighs> Hopefully there's going to be five minutes of added time because we've just lost possession, and here come Celtic on a bit of a counter-attack very quickly. Abada puts a ball in the middle, Varane clears it only as far as Dazen, though, as uh, he dribbles backwards towards Taylor, who gets the ball, dribbling backwards. Starfelt now, under pressure, finds the attacker. Garnacho slides in, wins the ball nicely. Batarina finds a ball over the top to Gonzalo Ramos. This is the moment. Five minutes of added time. We are three minutes 58 into it as it stands right now. And here come Celtic. Interception made. Rashford driving forward. He's swarmed by green and white hoops. Finds a ball towards Ramos, but it's been intercepted. And now Celtic have just got to hold on to the ball for 45 seconds. And then they are through to the knockout stages of the Champions League. Knocking us out in the process. Dallo clears his lines, finds Garnacho. 30 seconds to go. Garnacho, swarmed by two players, is tackled. And Celtic, again, have just got to keep the ball. They send it back to Joe Hart, who sends it to Starfelt. 15 seconds to go. I, I can't believe <gasps> the chances. We've squandered, but we haven't. Somehow, Gonzalo Ramos might have just sent us through. Oh, that is absolutely horrendous from Celtic. We have been given... It counts. We have been given the biggest lifeline I've ever seen. Iwata just doesn't look behind him. You can see him looking the other way, but thinks now I'll pass it back to Joe Hart, but Gonzalo Ramos was there. And that's done it for us. We're through. My, we did not deserve that in the slightest. Inacio out for two weeks of sprained wrist ligaments. Uh, looks like Coop Miners is out as well for four to six days. That's not too bad. And confirmation of our round of 16 appearance. <sighs> Any Celtic fans are watching this, I apologize. I, I am so sorry. It does mean we've gone five games without a win, though, which is not ideal. Hopefully, Luton Town up next, away from home, but they are bottom of the league. That will result in a win. Inacio injured. Let's bring him off for Kim. Let's get Latoro Martinez back on at left back as well. Costa is still injured. Malice is back. We'll just bring him on the bench for now, then. Rashford and Anthony swap. Let's get Gonzalo Ramos starting. Coop Miners comes off for Batarina as well. That looks like a good lineup to me. First chance of the game is coming towards us then as Martinez gets the ball into McTominay, into Kim, who shoots from distance and it's not far off, to be fair, just over the bar. And the second highlight looks like a carbon copy of the first, a throw in right down by the corner flag. This time, Scott McTominay feeds it into Bruno Fernandes. His shot takes a deflection, goes past the keeper, gives us the lead. I'd like to see the replay on that, actually. So Rashford finds McTominay, finds Bruno, and yeah, I think his shot is just deflected off the back of uh, Mangala there and finds the back of the net. Garnacho on the ball, edge of the area, decides to... Uh, t wow, Fez. 2-0 very quickly. This game could not have come soon enough for us, I must say. Looks like we are going to be heading towards our first victory in six games, and to celebrate that... Go and get yourself the Tom FM shirt. It's currently on sale still until Monday, so not long to get it now. Link down in the description to the Hope and Glory website. Once it goes off sale on Monday, it's gone forever as Garnacho scores another, his ninth of the season.
wonderful. 3-0 inside of 30 minutes. That's exactly what we needed here to restore some confidence into this side who must be losing a bit of morale and confidence in recent weeks. So this is the exact sort of game we need to restore that and get ourselves back to winning ways, get ourselves on back of the Premier League table at some point soon. That would be nice. As we head towards January as well, there's a few players who maybe should be fighting for their places in the team. I mean, Dean Henderson, I can see why they sold him in real life now. I always thought he was quite good, but I mean, what was that? We might look to sell him in this summer's transfer window to maybe fund a few more players coming into the team. I'm pretty happy with Garnacho, Rashford and Ramos as a front three. They seem to be settled in there quite now. Bruno Fernandes is the only real star man in the centre of midfield. Coop Miners and Batterina doing a good job as the Mazala. McTominay actually probably doing better than Casemiro this season, but... Casemiro getting older, McTominay, maybe not a man you actually really want to be in that position, but he's doing a good job right now. I'm pretty happy with the back line. They don't really concede many goals at all. And whilst I've been talking, the entire second half has just flown by completely. We're in the 90th minute already, no highlights at all, no subs because I just wasn't paying attention to the time, but we win the game 3-1. Brighton up next to a 15th in the table, having a very poor season. Hopefully we can capitalise on that. Fraser, Bruno's game there, he was really, really good. Uh, put my arm around him body language remained unchanged that's a bit annoying uh, superb with the chances you created last time out morale increases Garnacho form deserves Argentina recall you know what 11 starts 9 off the bench 9 goals 1 assist 7.27 average rating I think he's played very well arguably arguably our best player. He's keeping Anthony out of the team, who is not particularly happy that he's not playing games. Let's discuss the issue with him and ask him what's up. He is furious that he's not starting enough games. Well, would you accept being a squad player from now on? Don't be so ridiculous, my word. You know what? I wouldn't mind selling him. I don't think he's been brilliant this season, if I'm honest with you. And at the moment, Garnacho and Sancho are both ahead of him. So... Maybe I threaten him. Maybe it's best that you leave the club. And he's not happy about any of this. He's got no intention of leaving. I'll get away eventually. Right, well, looks like we've got a bit of a stalemate here with Anthony. He joined, yeah, gee, 82 million. That really is just sickening, isn't it? Ericsson, also upset now he's not getting enough first team football. Um, right, discuss issue with Ericsson. Can you be a backup player? No, he... <laughs> Just do me a favour and just agree with me, please. He wants a loan move. He doesn't want to move away permanently, but we do need you. We do need you. Show me some respect. I'm professional. I'll leave it there. Okay, well, a little bit of discontent going on in the dressing room right now. As a result, the club atmosphere has taken quite a big hit. Quite a big hit, actually. That's not ideal. A managerial support is only average and slightly in the red. And a lot of players agree with the... Right. We need to sort this dressing room out, I think. Who is Who agrees with me? Donny? Oh, Don, right. Well, that, that means nothing, does it? Maybe we recall Facundo Palestri because he... I, every week I'm getting notable events. This guy's playing amazingly well at Southampton out on loan. 20 starts, 3 goals, 7 assists, 8 player of the matches, 7.53 average rating. Yes, it's in the championship, but you know what? I'll bring a hungry player back home. Hopefully we've got a recall. Have, have we got a recall thing in his contract? Can we recall him? Can be recalled. There we go. Champions League round of 16 draw is made today. Well, let's have a look at this draw then, shall we? Champions League start the draw. Wonderful. Right. We are an unseeded team here because we came second in our group. Uh, the seeded teams are obviously teams that won their group. So we will play against one of these teams. And my word, they look good. I'd rather take on Benfica or maybe, hopefully Benfica. Paolo Maldini hosting the ceremony. I'm sure he, oh, we're first. Wow. Okay, we're at home against, please be Benfica, Dortmund. You know what? Could have been worse. Out of all of those teams, I would have wanted Benfica first, naturally. Lazio or Dortmund would have been my second choice there, actually. I think we're getting very lucky in today's episode in terms of Champions League. As for the Brighton game, I think we're going to keep the exact same lineup as we had for the Luton game. No changes. I think today we're going to keep this one to a slightly shorter episode. You might be able to tell my voice is going a bit. I've been coming down with something literally since the beta started, uh, which has not been ideal for me, really. 
but I think you can probably start to hear it in my voice today and I, I can feel it. So this will be the last game of today's episode, but next time, wow, January transfers. I think there's going to be a lot going on. Is that is that an own goal or a, an own goal for Adam Webster? I thought our player might have got a touch on there, but it's an own goal to start the game off here 38 minutes in. Who was our player in the middle there? Uh, Batarina. It's a shame Batarina's not been credited with the goal here because he does stick his, well, maybe he doesn't stick his foot out. It all was Webster. But there's a highlight straight from the kickoff. Now, interestingly, Brighton picked up Firmino after he left Liverpool. He's not gone to Saudi Arabia in this universe, so he's at Brighton, which is actually a really smart signing for them. But it does mean that Evan Ferguson isn't playing for them. And I think he might be the better option as Rashford sends his ball wide. So many times he's done that. He gets into such great positions as Rashford, but he rarely finishes. When Sancho's back from his next injury, I think he's got to be swapping with Rashford for a few games and seeing what he can do from that inside forward position as Rashford once again finds himself on the ball, 42 minutes in the game gone. Batterina now forced backwards into McTominay, finds Bruno, edge of the area. Garnacho completely open and Garnacho hits the crossbar. I think him and Ramos have hit the crossbar three or four times in today's video. But as the second half trundles along, 60 minutes on the clock, uh, we will bring Rashford off. He's a bit tired actually so let's bring swap him and Garnacho over let's bring Anthony on on the far side of the pitch let us no one's playing particularly well are they Varane having a poor game let's see what Lindelof can do actually at centre-back he's normally played inverted fullback but Dallas played pretty well the past few game weeks so he's kind of maintained that place in the team Christian you were crying to me about not playing enough games weren't you uh, let us bring you on for Batarina Martinez finds Ericsson from the throw into Victor Lindelof who's now on the pitch Dallow finds Anthony who's Days may be numbered as a Manchester United player as he uh, almost says Bruno Fernandes. Great save from Jason Steele. The one goal here might just be enough to secure a second Premier League victory in a row. Something that we desperately need as Anthony's got himself injured. Uh, now, hopefully it's not too serious because this could really affect being able to sell him in summer. Because if he's injured for a long time, he won't be able to pass a medical anywhere, which is not ideal. And when I said summer, I meant January, obviously, because I want to get rid of him ASAP now. Looks like we are doing enough to win this game. It's a, another injury. Right, Scott McTominay now. Casemiro on your come. Hopefully that's not an in, uh, a serious injury because actually I really like Scott McTominay. He's been so good for us. But we do win the game. It puts us back into third place in the table. Two points off the top. So we are right in there still. And to the out for three to four weeks. <sighs> He, he could be sold right at the end of January. It, it might be okay. McTominay, only four to seven days. That's absolutely fine. And Donny van der Beek, close to triggering a clause that will mean we have to pay Ajax 1.1 million. Right, he can't play any more games now. We've got to try and get him gone in January. Now, we've only got 1.28 million pounds to spend. However, we get 25 million pounds when Harry Maguire leaves the club. And hopefully a few of the players leaving could top that up towards the 100 million pound mark. Zaniolo, available for 30 million. We don't need more wingers, but 30 million is nice. Reese James, he would be like the perfect inverted fullback, wouldn't he? There are definitely some options for us to bring into the club. I'm excited about it. 